Hey there everyone, my name is Ryan Shul. Welcome to my channel. So today I want to talk about reinforcement learning and use this RL agent, it's abbreviated RL, <clears throat> to make sequential decisions about interacting with an environment to maximize a reward over time. And the reward is profits in the stock market. Okay, so we're looking at reinforcement learning to trade stocks and create profits from that. So Basically, we have a component, there's an agent, an environment, a state, an action, a reward. You're basically training this agent and saying the more profit is better, right? As humans, that's what we know, more money is better than less money. Typically, I mean, I want to get into like all the topics of greed and everything, but within constraints and limits, usually more is better. So the reward is to um, teach this agent and give it rewards and say, this is approval. I like what you're doing. You're learning how to trade stocks more efficiently and your reward is some praise or some kind of satisfaction. And a punishment would be the opposite, right? So if you're losing money in the stock market, you get punished and you learn that's not good. That's not good behavior, right? So I have to self-correct. I have to fix myself and get myself straightened out, right? So you want to give the agent rewards and train it and teach it how to improve uh, your daily returns, improve your sharp ratio. We'll see that in a couple of minutes. And the goal is basically to learn how to allocate stocks that are efficient. And again, give this agent a long-term reward, which is compounding returns and increasing returns and improving sharp ratios, right? So right now we're going to simulate this with a random policy. And once you plug in and, and play the RO library, which is a stable based lines three, there's a few of these that you can pick. This is the one I picked, this performs pretty well. The agent will learn from this by trial and error and it will allocate um, capital in a way that improves the performance and improves the, the trading capabilities of this model over time, okay? So this is the code, it's a little bit complicated, but um, it's not too bad, okay? So uh, I'm gonna share all the code with you so you don't have to like take notes and write this down and try to memorize anything. It's nothing like that. I'm gonna give you all the code. All you have to do is copy and paste it and run it. We're going to import data from Yahoo Finance. We want the date, the ticker, the price. I wanna know the action. Is this a buy or is this a sell? Okay, so I have all the logic down here. If you look closely, you'll see everything here is laid out and planned out for you and the weight and then the portfolio value. So I want to cumulatively over time, is the portfolio increasing in value or is it decreasing? Again, the reward is to show the RL agent, okay, you have to make better trades, okay? And the punishment is if you're making worse trades and losing money, I'm going to punish you. And if you're making better and better, better trades, I am going to reward you, okay? So that's the whole genesis of this whole concept, all right? And that's reinforcement learning. So it's always a reward or a punishment. So let me go ahead and import the data from Yahoo Finance. So again, the only thing you have to um, work, like not worry about, I was gonna say worry about, <laughs> it's not really, you have to worry about. The only variables that you really have to change or interact with is this right here. I'm going back in time 10 years. If you've seen my other videos, this is pretty common theme. Like I do this, uh, make it pretty dynamic. Like you could pick between different dates. I wanna trade, uh, today is, 523, so I don't have the closing prices for today because the market's still open. If I could trade like uh, 522, 2022 to 522, 2025, I can trade in the last three years. I try to make these dynamic. I think it's a little bit more um, reasonable because the market is very finicky and, and fickle. Like if you look at a very specific period of time and you do your analysis like that, that's fine. It's totally fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I feel like the market is so dynamic and changing all the time. If you pick a very specific period of time, that's kind of like creating more work for yourself. It's not very relevant. It's not very useful kind of nonsense. I just take take uh, today and go back in time a certain period. It can be 12 months, 24 months, three, 36 months. And this is, is um, uh, 10 years. So going back 10 years in time. So whatever that is, 10 times 12, 120 months. So going back in time, 120 months. You can make it whatever you want. I think to make the dates more dynamic is more useful. If you want to pick a very, spe very specific, very specialized period of time, that's up to you. But the only thing you'll have to change is this right here, tickers, and then the period of going back 10 years, okay? So I just refreshed, I imported the data so you can see the date, the ticker, the action price, the number of shares bought. Um, 
or, or sold, right? Because this could be a buy or sell transaction and the weight and then the portfolio value. So we're starting with uh, $1 million and you can see all the stocks that this RL agent is buying or selling and then the price and then the number of shares it's buying, right? So we take 1 million, dump it to the market. I said, okay, based on historical performance, you make the trades, you make the decision, and then want you to optimize the whole thing. Um, it's not true optimization, but uh, reinforcement learning is kind of in that category, right? Well, we're at the end, I'll show you like how it's a little bit different from optimization. I do have a few portfolio um, optimization videos that I posted on my channel, so you can check those out. So it's kind of a similar concept but we're using AI to do the optimization. We're not using uh, some type of Markowitz um, efficient market hypothesis, right? That's like a different concept, kind of similar, but kind of different too, right? So this RL agent is buying different tickers or selling, and based on the price and the action, you can see all the details of every trade that the agent is doing. This is how it started going back in time 10 years ago, so 527. Now it's 523, so we're going back 10 years, and it ends yesterday with the closing prices yesterday. Okay, so we have everything that we need right there. So that looks good. Let me go ahead and plot this. Okay, so if we followed this agent's trading pattern, we started with 1 million. If this is a plotly zoom. If I zoom in on this, we start with uh, just over a million, a million and a couple of bucks here, and then we end. If I double click it, it should refresh. We end right here, kind of had a little dip recently, but we end right here with uh, 8.56, so 8.56 million. So we dumped in $1 million 10 years ago, now we have 8.5 million. So 800, was a 800% um, increase in profits, right? So pretty good increase, right? And you can see the RL agent is doing all the trades over time, kind of follows the market. But I also want to compare this to what the actual market was doing. What is the S&P 500 doing? Because if I made $8 million, and I mentioned this in a few other videos, that sounds great. I made $8 million in profit, right? Or $7 million. I started with one. Now it's um, just over eight. So I made seven in profit. Now portfolio value is $8 million. Dropped a little bit from the peak, which is about $10.3 million over here. Um, so is that good or is that bad? You know what? It's, that's actually impossible to answer that question. Because if the market was up 1,000%, um, right? And if I could just invest in the S&P 500 and make, I don't know, some, some I'll just throw out some number, uh, 15 million or whatever, then my profit really is not that good relative to the S&P because I could just dump it to the S&P. You can invest, invest directly in the S&P 500 and uh, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to think about anything. If the S&P outperforms your portfolio, then that is a better option, right? If you make 1 million or if you make 10 million or 100 million, I don't know, it doesn't matter, but if the market is making more, if the S&P is making more, then you're actually losing. If you make 10 million and the S&P was down 10% uh, or whatever, then you're really winning. You're really hitting it out of the park, right? So we have to do some type of baseline comparison. So I'm gonna import S&P data right here. Here's the import. And I want to look at the sharp ratio of each, okay? So a sharp ratio is basically the uh, riskiness of the portfolio minus the risk-free rate. That's this is the cost of doing business or the um, you know the cost that you would pay to borrow money, right, to make your investments divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio. That's how we get the sharp ratio. If you don't understand that, go ahead and and Google that. But we always want some kind of comparison. So if our riskiness of the portfolio minus the risk-free rate and take those and do that subtraction divide that result by the standard deviation of the portfolio. If that is beating the S&P 500, then we're winning. Again, we need some kind of baseline for comparison. We need a foundation to build on, right? So the S&P 500 is gonna give us that. And we have the sharp ratio for the portfolio is 0.9133, and of the overall market, the sharp ratio is 0 0.6850. So we're winning, we're beating the market, right? We're doing better than the market. And, and this is great, right? So we're in a positive position. So let me hit control enter to refresh this. And again, I'm gonna give you all this code. So now this is where the rubber meets the road, right? So we see the original portfolio um, uh, and the RL portfolio, again, is the reinforcement learning agent. So the RL portfolio is really slamming here. It's really doing quite a good job. We have a sharp of 0.91. The S&P 500 sharp is 0.69, okay? So a little bit under. 
the risk adjusted return is a little bit under. And you can see the returns of the S&P 500 is about 3.3, um, right? So we started with a million, we start at the same point, same point in time right here, okay? Same exact spot, 1 million is the starting point. So the RL agent is really knocking it out of the park for us. It's really doing a good job for us. So we're up to 8.6 million. If we just dump it into the S&P 500, we have 3.25 million in the same period of time. You can see a little dip over here. This was COVID, right, in March 2020. But by April, we kind of like, um, you know, basically pretended that COVID didn't even exist. And by April, the market was already on an uptick over here, okay? So there was a little pullback over here. You can see that. And the S&P stayed more consistent. So the riskiness of the S&P is definitely less, right? But the riskiness of this portfolio that we created and what the RL agent is doing for us uh, a little bit more risky, but you get more bang for the buck too, right? So uh, more risk, more return. That's very common in finance. You see that all over the place. More risk, more return. Less risk, less return, okay? That's pretty common. That is everywhere. So I want to do one more exercise where I look at the sharp ratio at the end of each year. So again, the sharp is riskiness of the portfolio minus the risk free rate divided by the standard deviation. So I just want to see how the RL agent is holding up relative to the S&P. So here it's winning, that S&P is losing, here it's ahead, here it's just about the same, here definitely winning, um, definitely winning. So the agent is really doing a good job trading for us and this is all AI. So in this year, 2021, it's actually um, under what the S&P was, that's interesting. And here there's a bigger loss too. But again, we break out of that, that pattern and this is positive, this is a little bit under, right? And this is under two. So it kind of flip flops a little bit, but you can see like on the whole, like the agent is doing a better job, but every year is performing better. No, the S&P is a phenomenal investment vehicle, right? And I tried several different strategies on my channel. I talked about it uh, many different times. The S&P is a fantastic investment uh, vehicle for you. If you're not a sophisticated trader, or you don't have time to watch the market every day and try to understand all the nuances and try to distill that and internalize it and understand there's so many complexities in the stock market you really have no idea. I've been doing this for more than two decades. It, it gets crazy, guys, it gets crazy. You wanna invest that kind of time if you're a professional and you get paid to do that, it's probably worthwhile. If you are doing this as a hobbyist or you're trying to manage your own portfolio, maybe you don't wanna get involved, right? Like. Here, the agent is doing a great job for us. But again, it takes a lot of work. And you can see all the details of all the trades right here, okay? Every single trade is planned out and plotted out right here. So you see historically what the agent was doing. We have every single transaction accounted for. So that's great, but the point is it takes time to do this, right? And you have to monitor that. And I guess you get out of it what you put into it. If you put in a lot of time, you can make a lot of money in the stock market. If you don't have that luxury of time, then maybe just put it in the S&P and and you'll be pretty well off. You can see in this example, not quite as, as well off as what the agent was doing. But again, uh, time is money. It's gonna take time to do this. If you really wanna get involved, you can make a ton of money. If you don't wanna get involved, you can just put it in the stock market and set it and forget it. So this is a plot of this data frame over here. That's all we're looking at. So 0.579 negative, 0.04 positive for 2025. That's what we see here, okay? So that's a negative slight positive. If you go back to the first one, 2015, we're up quite a bit, 0.89, negative 0.27, and that's exactly what you see here, 0.89, Okay, and, and the last thing I'll talk about here is um, reinforcement learning with look ahead. So I talked about uh, portfolio management uh, or portfolio optimization, right? And there's a way to um, use different tools. Um, there's a bunch of time series analysis techniques. I have a whole, um, video on my channel about different time series analysis that you can do, whether it's uh, um, LSTM, um, Facebook profit. I don't even think I call it Facebook anymore. Facebook changed into meta a couple years ago. I'm not sure why, but they did a whole rebranding of the whole thing. Now it's just called profit. So I have another video on how profit works. I think I have a couple at this point. So if you want to do forecasting into the future, you can certainly do that. This is kind of like a, um, uh, cliff note version of that. It's kind of like abridged, very short, summarized. <clears throat> What's called reinforcement learning with a look ahead. So I will give you this code too. 
and this is kind of like portfolio optimization with uh, profit added in, but it's a little bit different too. It doesn't really like make these types of forecasts. It just tries to look ahead and tries to re make recommendations about how much um, weight you should put into each of these stocks. So we have Google, Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft, and the weighting should be uh, Google 61% and Amazon 38%. This is going to sum up to 100%, right? So what we're seeing is really a simplified vo form of portfolio optimization driven by forecast returns from this look ahead model that we created. But in this case, it's really just linear regression, which is a very simple type of regression, right? But it does assign, it does align with classical portfolio optimization um, techniques, right? So what's the concept? Uh, basically expected returns and estimating using a regression model over a rolling window, right? We're looking backwards in time, going back 10 years, but we're trying to look forward in time. What's the next step to, right? If we just look backwards in time, it's great. History um, is very revealing. It can tell us some very interesting things, but I also want to make money on this technique and on the strategy too. So what do I have to do next? Invest 61% of the portfolio in Google and 38% into Amazon. Apple and Microsoft are off the table at this point. These don't matter. These are not good investments at this particular point in time. Um, pit, it's abbreviated pit. Point in time is a, is a pit. But in the future, maybe tomorrow or next week or next month, that could change, right? We're looking at portfolio weights and allocating uh, the full value of the portfolio with the best investments that are available to us. We have constraints um, and the, the weights will sum up to 1%, 0 0.61, 0 0.38, uh, round up to 1.0. There's a little bit of a rounding thing there. Um, we have um, risk modeling, and uh, this is how we determine the return maximizing strategy that we just deployed here. So again, I try to get into the code. I can't dissect every single line. I had to do a lot of research and a lot of Googling to put all this together too, to understand it. Um, but I can't get into like every single line. That would take hours and hours. I don't think anybody is going to stand here and watch my videos for hours on end. I don't see that happening. I don't think that's feasible. So I just want to give you the summarized version, but this is what this is how these things work. And I will share all this code with you. You can copy and paste it and run it in your own environment. Again, the only thing that you will have to change is the inputs right here, these stocks that you want to analyze. I just picked these four. This can be anything that's covered by Yahoo Finance, right? They cover tens of thousands. I don't know what the actual number is. It's maybe 50, 60,000 different stocks. You can dump those in there. And this variable can change. This can be one year. This can be 10 years. This can be um, anything in between. I wouldn't go back more than 10. I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. Most of my analysis goes back um, a year or a couple of years. Even 10 is a long time for me, but I'm just... Uh, showcasing this this option right here for you so the last thing i'll say is this is not investment advice uh, please don't try to come and sue me if you use this technique and you lose money i don't think you're going to lose money in this it's very profitable very lucrative but um, i lost my job 18 months ago i have no money right i'm living on just driving on fumes right here just trying to get get by and scrape through the day that's how i create this youtube channel to try to make money from that and try to monetize this thing. I'm trying to use YouTube as a full-time job and make income doing that. But um, yeah, it's not investment advice. So if you lose money, don't get angry with me and don't try to sue me. I can't give you anything. I have nothing. I literally am down to nothing right now. But anyways, I just want to show you the mathematics, the, the statistics behind this, the computer science, the finance, the concepts, and just introduce that straight up and straightforward. That's why I call the, the, the channel Straight Data Science. Everything's 100% true and actual you can research anything and fact check it okay it's 100 percent accurate 100 percent true um so that's it so i'll leave you to it um change the parameters with different tickers go back and forward in time um with different parameters i went back 10 years you can go back um one two three it's up to you just try different uh, variables and see what the outcome is so that's it hopefully i was able to drop some knowledge that was useful and informative and intellectual i try to make all my videos um you know practical and and um uh what's the word relevant okay try to make it relevant that's it so okay i'm going to sign off right here and thank you so much for your time and i will see you in the next video very shortly thank you bye